Mark Wahlberg and Jonathan Romy from The Chosen did this live on TV. And I think this is interesting because they got people talking about faith. They got people talking about giving up something for Lent. They got people talking about God in what seems to be the news cycle. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan, and this channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. If you could please do me a favor, make sure you're subscribed. As a high percentage of people that watch this channel regularly don't even know they're not subscribed. So if you could hit that subscribe button, it really means the world to me. Now, let's jump into this video. Prayer app, Hallow, like Hallow Be Thy Name, seeing the biggest spike in downloads in its history after mm. this Super Bowl ad. We thank you for this time to come together as a family, That's as awesome. friends, and as a country. Help us, Lord, especially this Lent, to grow closer to you. Amen. Listen, I, I'm not I'm not Catholic. I'm not going to lie, that cross is kind of a vibe. The, the ash one? The, the Orthodox cross? got the illest logo? <sighs> yeah, they do. But the Catholics with the ash with the on ash. the... And you just gotta walk I, around all day. I, I can't just put one on. I gotta, I gotta get like a priest to do it, huh? You can put one on. I can't do that. Let's go do it. That's at hard. The, at the next ad break. <laughs> That's hard. I'm not gonna lie. That joint looked hard. I, I was, I was, I, when I ran to the store, I walked in and there was a lady walking near me, kind of walking in, and she had one. And I was like, that just, that's hard. Like it's such a, it's a flex. It's, it's, it's not a flex. It's just like an over unapologetic. Like, it's about Jesus. That's a flex. You know, it's a Jesus flex. Jesus flex is a little like it. Yeah. So yeah, I th I think uh you know, not to say it's all about aesthetic, but like aesthetic helps. Yeah, it, it helps. Stay prayed up. Oh, I love Stay it. prayed up. I love that. That's the whole thing on Instagram. People are ready to pray really? together pray starting yep. today because it is Ash Wednesday. We have Mark Wahlberg and Jonathan Rumi joining us on this incredible response. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. God Thank is you. moving across our country to watch the Super Bowl and the Hallow ad was really, really touching. What what's your reaction to this spike? You broke history. We just want to continue to encourage people to grow closer to God. So uh, it's been amazing. Ever since I was fortunate enough to get involved with the Hallow app uh, right around the, the release of Father Stu, you know, it really is, is allowed me to... That's a movie he did, right, where he played... Was he a Catholic priest? He contributed as much as I possibly can and use the platform that I have to encourage people to have a, a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Both of y'all are actors, and we hear all the time that if you talk about your faith as an actor, that uh, that can remove you from different parts and different opportunities. Mm. But that'd I be love... really hard for him, <laughs> know, considering the part Jesus. that he plays. That <laughs> I know, I know. If you haven't seen, if you've got to watch Father Stu, and you have to watch uh, the uh, the Chosen because you play such a phenomenal Jesus. You just exude you. love in that part. Uh, what try. was your reaction to breaking history with this app? Oh, uh, that it was awesome. I mean, it was just you know, I, I think we're Hallow is is filling a need, and to be able to you know uh, see the expression of that in a commercial during the Super Bowl and know that so many people want to get connected to God, want to have mm. a deeper relationship. They want to improve their prayer life and the fact that Hal can actually help them achieve that in ways that are so meaningful. It's just it's just music to my ears. I must say though, I w we had mass this morning. Mm. Jonathan did the second reading and <laughs> I was just listening to his voice and it was just it was different. So mm. soothing, right? Yeah. You have a 4 a.m. club. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. I mean, you clearly already had your mask. You have your ashes on your forehead. These guys were at the gym at 4 <laughs> o'clock, and they were like, where were you? I didn't realize, it's my day off today. I mean, I... People are always like, why can't you have a normal schedule? My thing is, if I'm at home, I do all the things that I need to do that are personal time mm -hmm. uh, before the kids and my wife get up. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I always get eight hours of sleep. It's not like I'm, I'm you know, burning the candle at both ends per se. I'm getting the rest that I need. It's, it's just, important. if I, in a perfect world, I'll go to bed at 7, 7.30, wake up at 3, 3.30, and then do my things, get those out of the way before I start my day with my family or Did he work. say, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Did he say he goes to bed at 7.30? He says 7.30, So wake up at 4.30? He said, that's, that's amazing. That's you incredible. guys have the nighttime. I'm falling asleep. That's incredible. That's early. That's early. He gets up at 4. 4.30, yeah. Wow. I mean, that's discipline, man. To go to bed at 7.30, to wake up at 4.30 every day. Wow, all right. Hmm. Just and you start with that's prayer. Good. Absolutely. I have a lot to be grateful for. When you mm. get out of bed, I was reading that you are on your knees immediately. Yes. How important is that to start your day in prayer? I think it sets everything up. It, it, it sets up your mindset. Your, it sets your spirit up for, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the challenges perhaps for the day and as, as well as the successes. And I think as Mark's saying, you know, starting the day with gratitude and, mm. and knowing that, you know, we've been given so much in this life um, to be grateful for to God and, and uh, 
and being able to to express that through prayer. Uh, and also all of us needing to do more. I mean, yeah. you know, people are always asking, what are you giving up? I've given many things up for Lent, whether it be, uh, you know, alcohol or something, you know, sweet. But for me, it's really about trying to do more, you know, trying mm -hmm. to be better, trying to grow as a person, as a mm -hmm. servant, a God, a father, a husband, you know, as an example, um, you know, and, and using all that real life experience that I have, I think it gives me a bit of credibility with people who have been struggling and who have, who have faced adversity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we just want to be able to do more. And I think what That's better than to have... So, so he's saying most people are giving up stuff Mm. for Lent. And he's saying he's done that. He's given up stuff. He's fasted. But he's saying for him, it's a time to do more. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Be more intentional. Yep. Have Ash Wednesday fall on Valentine's Day because where do you get more love than with the Lord? And with in a time where there's such a disconnect, we need things to bring people together. Mm. Yeah. And the power of prayer is doing that. So you're launching yeah. the Lent Prayer and Fasting Challenge today on mm -hmm. this Ash That's Wednesday. Right. Tell us about that. For Ash, uh, for Lent, on beginning today, we on Hallow, we, we take this book called He Leadeth Me, written by this uh, Jesuit priest named Father Walter Chiswick. And we, uh, it's a book that's uh, about, all about surrender. Uh, this, the man who wrote the book um, lived quite some time ago and he, he basically spent 20 years in, in Russia in prison camps and, and his whole experience of how he had to surrender to God in order to be able to get through that experience is mm. the focus of the challenge. And so we pray, uh, every day we do excerpts from the book, mm -hmm. we pray um, different prayers, Marked as a fasting challenge yeah. uh, every uh, Friday, is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and uh, basically just lead people through prayer throughout the entire time of life. I love your app. Palo is great, and you can choose the voice of who you want to read the meditation that day. That's and right. You're my voice every day. Sweet. Um, I'm not jealous, by the way. I'm not jealous. So I do pray with his rosary every almost every really? day. Yeah, yeah, oh, I pray. Oh, people God. say, I always hear from people, they always say, oh my God, you pray so fast, you speak so fast. I'm like, well, I got a lot He's to got do stuff in a short to do. amount of time. I mean, I'm, I'm still looking for time to, to catch up. That's okay. Everyone likes a different cadence. Uh, Fox and Friends prayer series starts uh, this coming Sunday. Every Sunday, Pete Hegseth, who's our weekend anchor, is going to read from the Hallow app during Lent. And I know that we we want to read one of the meditations. Yes. So I'll start it. Will you help me finish it, please? Sure, sure. Okay. So it says, how easy it is in times of ease for us to become dependent on our routines, friends, and possessions surround us. One day is followed by the next. Good health and happiness for the most part are ours. We don't have to desire much of the things of this world in order to have gained this sense of comfort and of well-being, to trust in them as our support and to take God for granted. Somehow then God must contrive to break through those routines mm. of ours and remind us once again that we are ultimately dependent only upon him, that the things of this world and this world itself are not our lasting city, that his we are, and that we must look to him and turn to him in everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Amen. Oh, Amen. that's beautiful. That's dope. That's awesome. Here's my here's my heart for um for this. I think a lot of folks struggle with this, whether it's um, oh, they're celebrities. They're celebrities, so they're bad. I don't trust celebrities. Okay, fine. I don't I don't need I don't care if you trust celebrities. They uh they're Catholics. I'm a Protestant. Catholics, bad. The the the, the degree of us versus them is um is profound. Now I don't I don't celebrate Ash Wednesday. I think a a a, a consistent life of discipline and, and fasting and these things are, are, are helpful. But I do have a passage for you guys that I think we're missing the macro here, whether it's uh, the incompleteness of the he gets us ad, which I have my critiques about. We did a video about that. You guys could check it out. Or it's the Hallow app. The reality is that these conversations are happening on a major, major level that they haven't been. I don't remember a time like this regarding talks around faith since the Passion of the Christ came out, which was, I think, 2004. And so uh, here's a passage that hopefully will kind of put all of this bickering and, 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 and debate in the chat to, to, to death for a second. This is Paul writing in Philippians chapter 1. Paul writes, It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish 
ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. So there were people that were preaching Christ out of selfish ambition and stirring up trouble for the Apostle Paul. Verse 18, though, but what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. So Paul is saying, hey, there are people who are using the gospel for personal gain. There are people that are preaching from false motives. There are people that are doing things to harm him. And in his paradigm, the Apostle Paul's paradigm, at least they're preaching Jesus and Jesus is getting talked about. We just did a video uh, where I added Kirk Kennedy's clip regarding what do you do with all the pastors, the Kanye platform? What do you do with all the preaching Kanye did? What do you do with all the Sunday services where they had altar calls and through free shows in arenas? What do you do with that? If, even though right now it seems like Kanye is very far from God. And Kirk Kennedy said, hey, that work that was done in God's name isn't void because the person, the vessel that God used is not in, the, in, in right standing right now. And, and Kirk, Pastor Kirk Kennedy paralleled it to Matthew 7, where Jesus talks about, many of you will come to me on the last day and say, we did these things in your name. And Jesus is going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. It doesn't mean that the things done in Jesus's name didn't have impact on people on this side of eternity. And so I think uh, uh, a way for me to, to let God be God and let me, me not worry about how it's all playing out and being a stickler for all this stuff is to say, hey, at least people are talking about Jesus in a positive light, and at least these conversations are happening on a cultural level that they haven't happened in a while. And there's multiple, there's two different organizations running ads during the Super Bowl, 100 million people. That's just the Super Bowl, not, not to mention all the other stuff that's happening on social media, all the other movies being made, all the other TV shows that are being made. And that, to me, is a huge net positive, even though if I were to get into details, I would probably have critique and issues with all of it to, to various degrees. But my critique doesn't really matter because God can use anything and does use a variety of means to draw people closer to himself. Uh, the passage we looked at was Philippians chapter 1, verses 15 through 18, I think. So anyway, um, I, don't, I don't think we need to always be fighting at each other, right? I think when a situation like this happens, it's actually an opportunity to start conversations with our neighbors. It's an opportunity to engage. It's an opportunity to saying, hey, like, what did you think about that? He gets us at. Oh, yeah, okay, I liked it, but this is where I think it fell short. Hey, what did you think about the, the, the Ash Wednesday? You, what do you guys think about that? Oh, you know, this is what it really means. And Well, you know, we don't really celebrate it like that because of this, right? I think all of these things are are huge. And, and, and let me just give you a fair warning. If you live in a paradigm where only your little select sect of people is right and everyone else is wrong with, when it comes to Jesus and the essentials of the faith, the Trinity, God, heaven, hell, right? The essentials of the faith, the going back to the creed. If you think that everyone else got it wrong, every other stream of Christianity got it wrong, and it's only you and your own little circle, and you guys are the ones that got it right, man, one, search your own heart for pride, but then from a methodology standpoint, make sure you're not in a cult or you're not behaving cultishly. Because if you think all, uh, everyone everyone everywhere is wrong except you and your little, your little camp, that's a scary place to be. I wouldn't want to be in a community like that. Could, not to say that you're, 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 you're not right, but I think multiple people can proclaim the name of Jesus and have multiple issues. And if you don't think your little community, your little pocket has issues and inconsistencies, ah, uh, man, you need to talk to more people. You need, you need to go outside more. You need more friends. Uh, because every, every circle, Protestant, Orthodox, Catholics, we all have our inconsistencies and we all have stuff we could poke out, right? But the, but the question is, are we pointing to Jesus and preaching Jesus? So the interesting thing in all of this is that these gentlemen were on a massive platform to promote the Halo app, which is an app to help people pray. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with digital apps or anything like that, but I prefer, and I've always preferred, a physical prayer journal, which is why we developed the Bless God prayer journal. We have it in tan and black, and in my opinion, when you have the ability to write something down, it just is stored better, it feels better, and they even say that it goes into a different part of your brain because you're able to recall the things you write down. So if you don't have your Bless God Prayer Journal, customizable prompts that I've been using for over a decade, go to blessgodprayer.shop. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.